In this video, I'm going to show you how you can create a really cool onboarding form in Webflow like this one right here. You can see we have multiple steps. And if I jump from one step to another, we also have these progress indicators up here, which shows the website visitor at which step they currently are. We have these really beautiful radio buttons. And we also have a validation. So I have to fill this out with some text and only then can I go to the next step. Additionally, we have some conditional logic. So for example, if I select marketing here, we get redirected to a different step called which marketing strategy works best for you at the moment. But if I select finances, for example, we get redirected to the step, which area of finance would you like to learn more about? So there's some conditional logic and branching involved here as well. And in the end, when the website visitor gets to the final step, they can check the boxes, submit the form, and then basically a normal Webflow form submission happens in the background. And I'm now going to give you a complete overview how I built this inside of Webflow. Inside of this Webflow project right here, and by the way, I'll also leave a link to the clonable for this Webflow project in the video description. But for you as a little overview, if we take a look at the navigator and open the section onboarding, you can see we have a completely normal Webflow form. And then inside of this form element, we have all of the different steps below each other as div blocks. So this is the first step div block. This is the second step div block. And this is the third step, fourth step, and so on and so forth. You get the idea. Basically, you just put all of your steps below each other. Once I had set up this structure, I then used the Input Flow app to connect all of these different steps. So right here in your Apps panel, you can just search for the Input Flow app, search for it, and then select it. In my case, I have already installed it. And then you can install it on your site and also open it. So I click on launch app. If you have not created an account with the input flow app yet, you quickly have to create an account here and then you will be, be redirected to this view. And as a little disclaimer, this input flow app has been created by me. This is my own input flow app. So if I tell you today that this is a really good app, then obviously I'm going to be a little biased. You can also find a little more information about input flow itself on inputflow.com. So essentially the way I built this is I used the input flow app to connect all of the different elements. I selected the different steps and gave them a name and connected them with input flow. So this is what you can do with the input flow elements manager. I also selected all of the individual buttons and then used input flow to turn them into next or back buttons. Basically, if you select an element inside of Webflow, then input flow will show you a couple of options what type of element you can turn it into. In this case, I selected it and turn it into a next button, but you could also turn it into a progress bar, progress step, error element, into a, a next button or a step element. And then once all of my steps and elements were connected to input flow, I published this to the webflow.io domain, and then I switched over to the form editor. And basically here inside of the form editor, you can then work with the steps that you create in the elements manager. So for example, you can see right here, we have this start step and this personal details step. And these are exactly these steps that we've created right here. So you can see here we have the start step and then here we have the personal details step. Inside of the form editor, you can then create the entire form flow. So you can connect these steps. And as you can see, you can also create branching. So the conditional logic and branching, which I showed you in the beginning, that if someone selects marketing, they go to a different a path or different step of the form. This is exactly how I did it. So I have these three optional steps and then I have these conditional blocks here. And for each of them, I created a condition. I can quickly remove this and show you how I did it. So essentially I just created this connection here and then I create a condition by clicking on this conditional block, create condition. And then I can say, we only want to go to this step if the website visitor selects the business focus and the business focus is a product, and then we want to send them to the product details step. Also the validations, which I showed you work in a very similar fashion. So if we take a look at this personal details step, you can see we have a bunch of validations here. We could also add calculations, but this is not too relevant for an onboarding form. In our case, we only have validations. 
And for each individual step, we can set up custom validations. So for example, right here, we have this validation input element first name is invalid if first name is empty. And then we want to display an error message. And the same with the last name and the same with the email validation. And with this validation, you have a lot of different options. So in this case, we use the is empty function, but you could also use different function. For example, the email is invalid if it equals is equal to some other input field inside of your form. So you have lots of different options. In this case, this would not make sense. So I just set it to the email is not valid if it is empty. The same holds true, by the way, for these logical conditions. So these logical conditions, they have lots of different functions. So you can set it to is, is not, contains, does not contain, lots of different options that you have here. And you can go really crazy here. You could also chain these logical conditions by clicking on this settings icon. And then I can chain another condition with and or with an or rule. And this way I can create really advanced conditions here. So as you can see, there is a lot of potential. And then once you're finished, then you have a really cool and custom onboarding form that will make your website and your onboarding experience special and stand out. If we were to take all of these input elements and smash them into a huge form, this can be overwhelming. But because we put them into different steps and then we chain them and then use conditional logic and branching to make it unique and individual for each website visitor, then this creates a much more interesting and better onboarding experience. If you want to build such an onboarding form, I will put the link to the clonable in the video description. You can also check out inputflow.com for more details. And actually, a few months ago, I've recorded an entire step-by-step -step tutorial how you can set up these multi-step forms from scratch. So today this was a walkthrough, but in this tutorial that you can click on right here, I went into much bigger detail and showed you exactly how it's done with InputFlow. Thank you for tuning in. My name is Mike. Have a great day. Bye.